Have you defragged your hard drive lately? Be honest with me. If the answer is no, go ahead and do it now. I'll wait. But seriously, if you're going to be capturing video, you need to defrag your hard drive. Whatever hard drive you choose to capture to, and there is some discussion about this, that hard drive needs to be defragged before you can do any serious capturing. You defrag because you want the drive to operate at peak efficiency. You want all the files to be contiguous, that is, located in one place and not spread out over the whole hard drive. This is extremely important during a capture operation. Go to the Start button. All programs, accessories, system tools, disk defragmenter. There are those who say, never capture to your system drive. There are those who say, never capture to an external drive. I say, capture to whatever drive gives you zero dropped frames. When you're going to be capturing video, right-click on your desktop and go to Properties and go to Screensaver. Make sure you turn your screensaver off. Also, under Power Options, make sure everything is on. You don't want the system going to sleep because it doesn't detect that there's a capture going on. Another thing you can do is use the System Configuration Utility, MS Config, which you access from the Start Run menu. You can take a look at what's loading at startup and disable anything that you don't need. For example, the only things I have here are my Shuttle Pro helper, a couple of mouse files, and the driver for my M-Audio Firewire 1814 audio interface. We're done with the preliminaries. Now we're ready to capture some video. And you're right, I cheated. I put a capture video button on the toolbar. If you don't have a capture button on your toolbar, file capture video gets the job done. Use an external video capture application. That brings up the Sony Video Capture 6.0 application. You'll note that the video application is telling me to connect a device. That's because I don't have a device connected. Before you connect a device, turn the device on. Make sure it's in VCR mode if you're connecting a camcorder. Let's give it a go. Well, so Windows could see the camcorder. Let's capture video. Let's use the external video capture application. I'm going to need to specify which video device I'm going to use. In this context, it's a Microsoft DV camera and VCR. And if everything is good, I should see my video. I have two options. I can capture video from the point where the tape is positioned, or I can capture the entire tape. In this case, I know I want the entire tape. It's only a few minutes long. I'm going to capture the entire tape. If it's not at the beginning, Vegas will rewind it to the beginning and then capture until there's no video on the end. Rewinding. Stopping. And now it's capturing. When the tape capture is complete, Vegas pops up a capture complete window. It gives us statistics here. If there are any drop frames, we'll know it here, and we can set it up so that the capture will stop on a dropped frame if we choose. Rename all. We never really set the name of this clip, so let's make it night one, clip one. And we're done. There are the clips. Vegas wants me to verify the tape name. I never gave it a tape name. So now the tape is named Night One. We can also capture video. Let's start it playing. We can capture video.
and stop. And when we stop, we have a chance to rename the clip or clips. And they're immediately added to the batch. We can use the shuttle to advance through the tape. If we have a shuttle pro, we have to remember to program it for the capture application. I forgot. We can also capture an image at any given point in time. Also add it into the mix. We can also control A, select all. Over here, let's, yes, we have the project media open. We can drag these all to our project media. Now they're available to us in our project. Capturing video in Vegas. Plug in your Firewire camcorder and you're ready to go.